Guys and gals, in this video, I'm going to show us how to turn these shapes into 3D forms, so give them a depth. And I'm also going to uh, talk a little bit about uh, a couple different views we can look at, and then also how to duplicate. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is just kind of get, get set up the way we were looking at this before, just making sure that we're sitting on top. That means we're looking straight down on our green and red axis. Remember the red is the X, the green is the Y. If you can see the blue right now, you are in perspective, which we should change to a thing called parallel projection. Where am I at? I'm at my scenes over here on the right hand side. All right, it's the fourth thing up. Okay, and we selected this middle button. Now, um, the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to go to the bottom right hand corner. And what we're doing is we're adding some depth. We're going to push pull these up. And the way one thing that's kind of nice to do when we're doing that is look at look at it from the side angle or an isometric angle. Click over here. And that changes our view. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the tool that we use to make our depth. And that is called the push pull. All right. It allows us to extrude or to pull up or down um, the, the shapes that we have or the geometries that we have. So I'm going to come there and I want to use the push pull tool. If you notice when you go over the surfaces, it highlights it by putting a little dotted pattern into it. If I select it while it's doing that and I slide up or I slide down, it's going to pull that in that direction. So I want to select it. I want to move the direction I want to make it, which is up for right now. And then I want to type in my data. All right. And I'm going to go. 50 millimeters for all of my shapes here. So I'm going to push pull my rectangle to 50, hit enter. And right there, I just pushed up and then typed. Uh, you can also select, push up, click again, and then type 50, enter. The same thing will happen. All right, so it's taking that, moving it up, dropping it, enter 50, and enter. Okay, now what we just did there is we turned all of our shapes into forms. So now they are 3D shapes. If I go and I go to my front view, they look like rectangles. If I go to my top view, you can see those different shapes. All right, if I go to my isometric view, you can see kind of how we have those piece, pieces put on there. All right. Um, the one thing I do want to mention is uh, you can also orbit around. All right, either by going to this tool right here, if you're not using a mouse, which is called the orbit tool, um, or you can come into here with your selection tool. If you have a mouse, if you, if you push down your uh, scroll wheel and move it around, it allows you to orbit kind of around your pieces that you've made if you click it and move it. All right. The other thing that's kind of handy to know is a thing called panning. You can go to the pan right here, or you can push down your scroll wheel and hit the shift key at the same time. It allows you to pan those shapes across your screen or up and down on your screen, uh, allows you to recenter them. Another thing is if you ever lose your stuff, if you have to go really far out and really far over to the side, you can find your information again by clicking on a thing called zoom extents. It is found on the bottom on the very bottom. If you click on this, what happens is it pulls everything you've made into the main idea, all right, and finds it for you. I hope that helps. Now, the one more thing that we're going to do today is we're actually going to select all of our stuff. So I'm just going to go to my top view, all right, and I'm going to use my selection tool to click and drag to the left, all right, and if you notice I click and drag to the left, it selects whatever I crash into. If I click and drag to the right, it doesn't select anything. So I want to make sure I can fully click and drag around my rectangle to select it. Now I have it all selected. And what I'm going to do next is go to the thing down here called the move tool. When I'm in the move tool, if you notice here, it says hit the hit control to toggle copy. So if I come in and hit the control key, it adds a little plus there. If I select this endpoint and slide up, and then just go a little bit past my last rectangle. I'm staying on the green axis, so it stays directly above it. Um, and I drop it again. And I'm actually going to do times or X2 after I drop that and hit enter. And it will duplicate it three times. I mean, I could have just slid it a couple more 
I, I could have, I guess, hit control and moved the rectangle again, but it's easier to know that you can always do X times how many you want, and it will add that many. Now, same thing for my rectangle or my circle. Click and drag from left to right, making sure you get your, your whole piece that way, going all, all the way around it to select it. Move tool, push my control key, it adds the little plus that's on there. And then when I click here, it allows me to move. I want to go straight up. You can see it's kind of staying on my green axis by um, kind of locking on that way. And then I move it up next to my rectangle, click. Once I click, I can do X2, and that's the same, copy that twice, enter. And now I have that. If it doesn't show up in the right spot, I can click and move that. by selecting it and just sliding it up. Now, one more time with our triangle. So select the entire shape by clicking and dragging from right to left. Move tool, select the point, hit the control key, Notice that I did it backwards that time, but it still duplicates it. Drop it and then hit times two or X to enter. And we have all of our shapes done. If we go into our ISO view, we have all of our forms made. All right. And that's some practice for this step. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click save. If you haven't, if you see it says anything besides save, it says save there, click save. Have a great day.